All right, so new update. Um, if you guys haven't been paying attention, Conor McGregor was supposed to fight this guy called Chandler not too long ago, but he keeps being postponed. It's been like two years that it keeps being postponed, and he keeps saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll fight, I'll fight. And uh, Chandler finally backed out, and they're not fighting. And ever since then, Conor's always, like, getting trashed. And, and there's a lot of interviews he does. Like, he can barely tell what he's talking in, about anymore. So the guy's just probably going off in the deep end on a bunch of drugs and alcohol. And he did a live stream recently. Um, and apparently it was incoherent. So was, this video seems pretty good by this guy. So I thought we would check it out. So, yeah. Today, UFC superstar Conor McGregor did a one-hour live stream with a sponsor. And this live stream was incoherent, it was unhinged, and it was completely disastrous. And this stream, there was interesting bits of information. There was interesting things that Connor said about Michael Chandler, about Turkey Ali Sheikh, about boxing opportunities, about BKFC. And we're going to look at those clips. He even talks about Bilal Muhammad a little bit. But the real point of this video is to just show you what a horrible, slippery slope that Conor McGregor is heading down. And after watching this, and I watched it in its entirety, I sifted through this entire thing to bring you guys the most pertinent parts of this of this stream. I'm leaning towards Conor never returns. I know I've kind of said that back and forth, but I wasn't really sure. Looking at this stream from beginning to end, and we're going to start in chronological order. We're going to start at the beginning. Last clip we're going to look at is at the tail end of the stream he increasingly becomes more intoxicated and more unhinged by the end of the stream. He just wants to be at the club. He just wants to be partying. He has no intention to ever really train and return to the UFC. That's what I got out of the stream. And this was borderline rock bottom for Conor McGregor. I know he's still rich. I know he's a millionaire. But this stream just shows me he desperately needs help. And probably his family, friends, and coaches don't feel comfortable standing up to him. And I said this a long time ago, and I'll say it again. The Conor McGregor 30 for 30 is going to be very interesting on ESPN one day. But let's just jump right into it because there's a lot to dissect here. We're going to start off. I heard there's this, this drug going around called pink, pink cocaine. And I don't know much about it, but it's like cocaine, but like with a whole, it's like a cocktail of drugs. And people like... I saw this cop video, like, I, if you watch my channel, I watch a lot of, like, cop videos. They pull people over, and it's, like, crazy videos. And there was a girl who was just passed out in the middle of a, an intersection, and she couldn't talk, but she was, like, looking at you, but she couldn't talk or anything, and she was completely incoherent, and ended up, the cop said that it was pink cocaine, and they said it was a cocktail of drugs, blah, 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 so... I'm wondering, like, maybe Connor, like, obviously he's doing cocaine and, and who knows what other drugs, but maybe he's getting into, like, pink cocaine or weird shit like that. Like, I know um, other stars. Who was it? There's another famous star. I think it's Bam Margera or... There's, anyway, there's a guy who's, like, getting uh, addicted to, like, gas that you get from, air, like, whippet cans, like, for... for uh, like uh, Cool Whip type of stuff, and if you turn it upside down, you, you get gas out of it and it fucks you up. But there's some rich guy that's actually getting addicted to that, and it's like no, it's Kanye West. Kanye West is addicted to that shit, and it's like you're you're a rich billionaire, you could do coke or whatever other drug, but you're doing that. Like, are you serious? But that's the thing, like they. These rich people, they don't know what to do with their time. Like, they made it. They don't have a life purpose anymore. Like, they're good. So then it's just party all the time and get get more and more fucked up. But it's to the point where this guy can't even talk anymore. Like, I saw clips of this video, and it's ridiculous how bad, like, Conor McGregor can't even talk. And it's like, yeah, I think he's at the point where he needs, like, rehab. But yeah, I'll shut up. This is literally, like, the very beginning of the stream. So, you know... If you think this is unhinged, which it kind of is, wait till later in this video as we go through the clips, because as the stream's going on, 
He's drinking more and more and more. By the way, if you're interested in this full stream, I will link it down in the description. Go check it out in full context. This is craziness. Again, this is like the first 30 seconds to the minute, to the first minute of the stream. Check this out. So I'm of about 7 million here in this jewel bits, yo, okay? So we're having the coolest stream all time, and I want to play a big few hands of blackjack and see where we go at the start. And I'll chat to the fans. I'll toast a nice Forge artist out here to the creamiest <laughs> stout in the land. Forge artist out. <laughs> Shlanda. Right, there we go. By the way, this guy, I forgot what his name is, does not want to be there. He's like, this guy is a straight-up cokehead. Okay, that's what he's thinking. But not too bad just yet. You know, oh, the creamiest, you know. Michael Chandler would have liked to taste that cream from you, Connor. I'm so glad that Michael Chandler finally moved on because imagine he's still waiting and we're watching this stream. And it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. But let's continue because there's so many clips where he just looks completely unhinged. Let's just jump right over to this clip. More unhinged behavior from Conor McGregor. And a lot of the times, and you'll see it yourself and I'll translate from what I understand, a lot of the time it's just rambling incoherently. Listen to this. Nah, you got, nah I'm not standing on 19. Okay. Stand, come on, stand, stand, stand. Stand our ground, yeah. Sometimes don't step back and throw the shot. Don't even go forward and throw the shot. Stand your base. Stand your base. It's your, the space is your space, yeah? And meet them. Whatever he throws, <laughs> whatever he come at you with, meet them with the... Got to show, gotta show the uh, advertisement for his alcohol. Got to show that. The shot, yeah? We didn't win, we didn't lose. So what, bro? Even happy days. 50 G still on the line. Go ahead, carry on. Next. So he's talking about gambling, but just in just deranged behavior, okay? It's Conor McGregor. Say what you will. I know some people are going to be like, Joey, that's not too bad. It's because you're desensitized to Connor at this point. But it gets worse. It continues to get worse and worse and worse, where it's just like, really? Should he even be showing up in public? That's what I get from this. Should he even be out in public right now? He's a liability to the UFC. Liability. Ah, yes, thought wrong, yeah. Still in the gym. Give us a show whenever you want. The mic to have a run out, yeah? Hey, how that, yo? Keep in mind, you're not missing any context. They're literally playing the game, and he just randomly starts like fidgeting with his hat, fidgeting with his jacket, and then just starts randomly shadow boxing. You're not missing any context. He's just re he's just bizarre behavior because he can't stay still. He just absolutely cannot stay still. Next clip is where he's kind of talking about, you know, his forged stout and whatnot, and he does this multiple times. Basically, he, he's getting paid to do this stream from this company, whatever the name of this company is, and essentially he just uses it as a platform to promote all his businesses the entire time, and he doesn't care because he's getting paid. And just use, using it to get fucked up. You know, like, he's not taking it seriously, obviously paid a ridiculous amount of money to do this ad for them and he's like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna advertise all my businesses on top of it listen to this and and seek out togi do that again i would say yeah for real do that again sponsored by forge Harris stout <laughs> the world's creamiest stout truth I hope you guys find this as funny as I do, but it's almost sad. And, you know, it's, he's not like Chandler. I mean, he's never said, don't you dare disrespect me by feeling sorry for me. So this is a, a combination, and you're going to see this get progressively worse as the stream goes on, as we get deeper into the clips. But this is the storybook of money can't buy education, money can't buy class, money can't stop you from falling into addiction or abuse of whatever substances that he's abusing. And it just gets worse and worse. This next clip is one of the interesting clips of he actually talks about something that's pertinent. He's asked, who do you think wins, Chandler or Oliveira? And he gives an answer and he talks about potentially fighting Chandler in the future. Listen to this. The comments, I'm on 
I'll show it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Chandler versus Charles uh, predictions. Chandler had him out on his feet in the first round. Ch Ch you know, Charles Oliveira has a, has a good record of recovering, very good record of recovering. And he recovered in that last fight, but, it, you know, Chandler couldn't, has a bit more, uh, you know, knowledge of that now. I'd love to see Chandler deal with it, to be honest. I don't have this thing with him. We have, we have to settle this, me and the little fool of a thing. Do you know what I mean? So let's see how it goes. It is what it is, whatever is the case. So he says basically he hopes Chandler wins so then we can settle this thing. But it is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. You know, m majority coherent there. Majority coherent there. Well, I just couldn't understand half of it, to be honest. But, but that's going to be interesting. Does Chandler have to win to fight McGregor? I mean, McGregor's won one fight in the last eight years. I don't. Th I think Chandler's got a better opportunity to fight Connor if he gets KO'd by Charles. So I don't think that's a total loss on the fight, but it is at least somewhat interesting. You know, Chandler saw this clip and was like, "Oh yeah, baby." He says he wants to settle settle it with me. He wants to settle the thing. Next clip, just more unhinged behavior. Drunk, already starting to get drunk a bit here. Uh, and just acting weird in general. Look, and, and again, you know, I know you guys may think some of these clips are out of context, but they're really not. You know, I'm, I'm giving you basically full context. He'll just be standing there like halfway gambling with this dude next to him. And then all of a sudden he just starts acting completely unhinged. Watch this. There's a free uh, quick few quid. Rewarding beyond limits. <laughs> Hey, pressing the buttons, lads, yeah? <laughs> I mean, what, what are we watching right now? What are we genuinely watching right now? Let's, let's just rewind that one more time. Let's just watch that back one more time. Just stares dead into the camera and starts acting completely bizarre. I want to see what these George Pirro drug tests are coming back positive for. Because you have to understand there's in-competition drug testing and out-of-competition drug testing. Out-of-competition drug testing, basically, as long as you're not on PEDs, you're fine. So if they come back positive for recreational drugs, you're only going to get in trouble for recreational drugs when it's in competition, which means close to a fight. I forgot what the exact definition is, and it might have changed from USADA to UFC, but it's like within a couple weeks of the fight is in competition. Right now, Connor doesn't even have a fight scheduled, so right now he's at a competition. So if he's popping for you know white powder or whatever it may be, it's not going to come back, and I don't think the UFC would announce it to us anyway. I think a lot of the time, kind of, you know, there's a there's a balancing act right now now going on between the UFC and Connor McGregor between the contract situation but also the fact that Connor's super unreliable and in desperate need for help. Next clip we're going to jump ahead to is, is another interesting clip because he starts really hyping up Riyadh season. And what I find so interesting about this is I told you guys, I think that McGregor is basically working on a partnership where he goes to BKFC post UFC run. And then he works out a deal with Saudi Arabia. Now that deal may end up in place before Conor goes to BKFC, but I basically think the future of Conor McGregor is him headlining potential BKFC cards in a partnership with Saudi Arabia in Riyadh season. Listen to this, and this just l lends more credence to that potential theory. Listen to this. I got it. Uh, let's see, it's gonna be a cracking fight. Again, brought to you by Riyadh season, Sheik Turki. Make sure you are thankful, folks, because I shudder to think what the game would be, what, what, what the landscape of the game would be had we not had the blessings of His Excellency Sheikh Togi and Riyadh season. So I'm, I'm a backer of Riyadh season. So starts hyping him up a bit, nothing too crazy. And then a little bit later, not that far, I'm not skipping that far ahead. A little bit later, he says basically he's in talks. He was in talks to box Terrence Crawford, discussing it with Riyadh season and Shake Turkey. Listen to this. Listen to this. Yeah, now he could do him. He's slick. It's, uh, Crawford is very slick. He also has a wrestling pedigree. So you know, you know, they're always talking to me about belts. I've 
You know they're always talking to me about bouts, and he's talking about Terrence Crawford right now, but he's still in a contract with the UFC. Now, he does bring up MMA a little bit here, and he is intoxicated, so who knows what he's actually trying to say. It's a little bit shaky what exactly what he's trying to say here, but they're always talking to me about bouts. You've already boxed a boxer. You want me to box a boxer? A boxer MMA is me. You know what I mean? I'm the most generated. I generate the most. So I talk him back and forth. And it's like a two-fight deal. I rings, he rings up Crawford in front of me the day after the fights. I said, Crawford, I guess on the phone, I said, Crawford, they're talking to me here about you and me. He's, he rings up Crawford the day after the fights. I don't think that's Dana White. I don't think Dana White's ringing up Terrence Crawford. Maybe he is. I think he's talking about Shake Turkey, who if you watched my video from you know a week ago, I'll actually link it down in the description, Connor says, I can't get a fight. I'm going to talk to Shake Turkey and see if he can help me out. A two-fight deal, MMA, first boxing, second. I said, I know you have an extensive background and balls the size of a Bengali tiger. They're asking for a fight. It's going to be hundreds of millions on the line. What's up? And he goes, I don't, I don't want to take a kick. Or I don't fancy taking a kick off Conor McGregor, he said. So you got to respect that. But they heard that. And then, you know, I don't know what's happening. There's loads of things on the table. Very exciting announcements are coming from McGregor Sports and Entertainment and Riyadh Season. Very, very huge announcements. So stay tuned for them. If that doesn't lead in credence, he's saying, we're talking about boxing Terrence Crawford, a.k.a. Kendrick Lamar, according to the UFC broadcast. But very exciting announcements. He's teasing announcements from him and Saudi Arabia, Riyadh Season. That doesn't bode well. Now, now to, to kind of, you know, give another theory a little bit, the UFC is in business with Turkey Alashek and Riyadh season, and they are planning to take a pay-per-view there next year. So maybe that's how kind of this all comes together. But man, if I'm not sensing a massive fallout between Conor McGregor, Dana White, and the UFC very, very soon within the next year, if I'm not sensing that right now, oh, um, it's going to be, it's actually going to be glorious to watch. It's going to be very. It's going to be very. It's going to be one of the most interesting stories in MMA history to watch the fallout between Conor McGregor and Dana White. Next clip we're going to look at. It just goes to show what a bad spot he's in because I'm fast forwarding about ten minutes here, and you can just see how bad off he is. And he's he's cracking up and he's cracking open another can. He's saying, "Look, I may put a I may put a dozen down, down of these down on stream. Listen very carefully here." I may put a dozen of these down. Starts laughing. He's already intoxicated. And listen to this. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Oh, alright. Stand. Bum. And by the way, you can see him looking down. He's like licking his lips. Should I? Should I go for another? Should I get completely plastered on this live stream? Maybe that's not a good idea, but I'm going to anyway. I might put down 12 cans on this stream. <laughs> well, I just think, hit the 12 can mark. Only the real G's can hit the 12 can mark, yeah? Three packs of as the five lips. You can't go wrong. Four Jarvis style. Look at him, like. As cool as it gets. The kill He's literally putting sunglasses on a, on a can of alcohol. And, and we still got another, like, 40 minutes to go. We got another 40 minutes of this stream to go, and it just gets worse and progressively worse and progressively worse. We're going to listen to We're going to watch a little bit more of this particular moment. The coolest stout there's ever been, yeah? For real. Oh, they don't know what happened there. I'm at the zone. I'm at the... So there you go. There he is just, you know, talking about he may, he may just drink 12 cans on stream. It's an hour stream. He's drinking 12 cans on stream. Yeah, this guy, when, when, when's he going to return? 2025, maybe. 2026, maybe. Chandler's still going This guy's talking a little bit too much. Like, show us the clips there. Like, come on. I'm going to be waiting for him, probably. He says, yeah, I'm not, I'm not Connor's next fight. I'm not, Connor's not, not my next fight, but I'm Connor's next fight. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad he finally moved on. Because imagine watching this, knowing that Chandler's still sitting on the sidelines waiting for this guy. Next clip. Another actually interesting clip where he's not acting completely incoherent. He's asked about, he's asked specifically about Bilal Muhammad here. So listen to this. 
play and so on my own, yeah. What do you think about Bilal Muhammad as a champ? Oh, he's woeful. I, 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 I want to I wanna fight him. Yeah, let's schedule. Okay, Chandler's matched. Bilal McGregor, uh, UFC welterweight world title fight on the line. Bilal would dump this dude on his bald spot. Bilal would completely and utterly dominate Conor McGregor. The UFC would be insane to even consider this, first off. Considering Connor has won one fight in eight years against a checked out Cowboy Cerrone blown up to welterweight. And this dude's talking about Bilal Muhammad. And then he starts to crap on Bilal a bit. Coming from a guy who cheats on his wife in public restrooms, maybe not even consensually, and he, he has the audacity to talk about a dude who's out there winning world titles while Connor just, you know, kind of racks up, you know, assault allegations. And not just regular assault allegations. Listen to this. I'm on, I'm, I've knockouts, multiple knockouts in uh, at 170. I'm a force to be reckoned with at 170. I did He's got multiple knockouts at 170. You knocked out Cowboy Cerrone, dead body, blown up lightweight. Come on, calm down. Do damage at 170, yeah? Check the stats. So uh, I've done them at 100% accuracy. This man hasn't even got a knockdown in UFC history. Not one knockdown. It's embarrassing, to be honest, you know. Kind of slow a roll on a person, yeah, because you just don't give a bollocks. They're all bones in the thing. There's not, you know, you don't be interested. Come to me, boy. For that, for the strap, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, next one here. Stalin, uh, Dana, and the lads. Hit up Togi. That's very interesting. And it's a little bit incoherent. I'm not 100% sure what he's trying to say here, but I want to play it again. It sounds like he says Dana is stalling him. Now, if you guys can you know, make out exactly what he's saying here. He's starting to kind of slur his words, plus he has his accent here. It sounds like he says Dana's stalling him. Listen to this one more time. Well, like, they're all bones in the thing. There's not, you know, you don't be interested. Come to me, boy. For that, for the strap, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, next one here. Stalling, uh, Dana and the lads. Hit up Turkey. Stalling Dana and the lads hit up Turkey. I'm not 100% sure he's impossible to understand there, but I think that's that may be what he said. But again, he's intoxicated, he's unhinged, he's incoherent. It's hard to make out truly exactly what he's saying. But to act like, oh, Bilal hasn't dropped anyone and this and that. Bilal's been fighting elite-level competition while connor has been sitting on the sidelines getting in legal case and legal trouble, legal trouble after legal trouble and assault allegation after assault allegation in public restrooms and, you know, not showing up for the ultimate fighter, not showing up for Michael Chandler, leaving Michael Chandler at the altar, having Michael Chandler leave his, you know, wife as a single mom for eight months and pulling out with a broken pinky toe. And this dude has the audacity to talk about a guy who's out there winning world titles while the only thing he's doing is snorting lines. It's just insanity to me. But it continues to get worse and worse and worse. But this next clip, he actually talks about some big announcements coming soon with Riyadh season. Kind of kind of goes back to that. Now, to be fair, this could mean anything, but he was just previously talking about BKFC. So again, he could just be talking about the relationship between him and BKFC and Riyadh season. But I also think it could be him headlining a BKFC card for Riyadh season in Saudi Arabia. But you guys can listen to it and come up with your own interpretation. Didn't you see the cars are coming after it? And what the big announcements we've got, we've got coming for you is with Riyadh season. There's a big, there's big announcements coming and big cards lined up, yeah? Big fights, blow the socks off is the fights will, yeah? The announcements are unexpected. The announcements are unexpected. There's no one doing it like me, nobody. Not since inception have they been doing it like me. Still to this day, I'm doing it. I'm different, yeah? <laughs> Look at the cream, yeah? Yeah, so that's very, very interesting. Unexpected, big announcements coming soon. Now, again, it could just be the partnership with BKFC, but it also could be Connor's intoxicated and he's letting it slip out that basically he's working on a deal behind the scenes with Riyadh season and BKFC because he is a partial owner of BKFC. And I'm so wondering, I'm, I'm so curious how this all plays out. 
because I'm thinking about this literally as I'm recording this. I didn't even think about this at all, really, before I hit record on this video. But what if Turkey Alashik bought out Connor's contract with the UFC? He wants Connor there. They're not going to drug test Connor. They can have Connor headline BKFC help grow Connor's company that he's invested in while also giving Connor hand picked opponents. Connor doesn't seem like he shows up, like, like the Connor I'm seeing on social media every single week that Michael Chandler was defending and saying, oh, he's just trolling us for two years. He's just trolling us. Doesn't seem like a guy who's too keen to show up to train every day at all. So I'm wondering, and this is a theory that I'm going to have to kind of research a little bit more, see if I can find any more evidence to support it. Could Turkey buy out Connor's contract and Connor never fight for the UFC ever again? Maybe. I don't know. Next clip we're going to look at, and this is actually infuriating, but luckily there's only a couple more clips that we have to actually hear to truly understand. I would love to play them all with audio, but as Connor gets more and more unhinged, he asks them to crank up music. So I've already clipped some of these clips out, and then I've uploaded them as a test upload, and they constantly get copyright. So otherwise, the whole entire video would get ruined. But there is some more clips we're going to take a look at where he's just completely unhinged. You just kind of have to look at him. But then there's at least, I think there's one or two more clips where we're actually going to listen to him as well, where the music isn't playing. This next clip we're going to take a look at, I just think it's ridiculous that he's literally blowing smoke. And also, they had to take a B-right uh, be right back break. So who knows what Connor, this is probably for Connor's line. So they had to take Yeah, after 45, 50 minutes, makes sense. <laughs> like a 10-minute break for Connor. I don't know for what reason. And when they come back, Connor eventually just disappears from the screen and goes to smoke. And I have this muted. You won't be able to hear this. He, he hints at that he's smoking a cigar. I don't know that he's smoking a cigar. You can kind of see it a little bit. It didn't look like a cigar to me. And he purposely hides off camera while he's smoking it. But what, the reason I wanted to play this is because first off, he looks ridiculous. Second off, he starts blowing smoke in the guy's face next to him which is completely disrespectful, but it's something somebody who's unhinged and completely intoxicated would do. Let's watch this. So you see him, he's just having a normal conversation here, and he'll just kind of dip out off screen. And then you'll see him kind of emerge in a little bit smoking. But before he comes back, before he comes back, he doesn't have whatever he's smoking. Now you'll see it a little tiny bit. You'll see this. You'll see whatever he's smoking right here. But later in the stream, he has the cigars out, and it doesn't really look the same. So I don't know if he's smoking weed or what he's what he's doing here, but he's smoking and he's blowing smoke in this guy, this poor guy's face, which this guy looks miserable to be there, by the way. But watch this. So he disappears off screen. The guy has no idea what he's doing. And then you, you'll hear if you were listening to this, and again, I can't play because they're blaring music now. They're blaring music because Connor, being Connor, all he wants to do is party 24-7. So he wants to feel like he's in the club, even though it's probably 2 in the afternoon when they're streaming this. I don't know where exactly they're at. But... Watch, in a second, you'll see him barely come into frame and start blowing smoke in the guy's face, which is completely ridiculous. So watch this. Look. I mean, is that not ridiculous? And then he just shows back up. You'll see him just show back up in a second. There's a reason he's doing this off stream. There's a, now, I don't know what the reason is, but there's a Well, I saw his hand for a second there. It was a joint, for sure. And it would make more sense to blow weed into someone else's face it's less insulting because you're like oh here i'm gonna get you high but maybe the guy doesn't want to get high and but like if it was cigarette smoke or a cigar smoke it would be gross but it's a little bit more acceptable with weed but yeah it's still disrespectful the reason he's doing it off stream and then he comes back and lets everyone knows oh i was just smoking a cigar i don't know it's up for interpretation here but that's basically what he says he doesn't have it in his hand anymore if it was a cigar, wouldn't he just smoke it on stream? I don't know. I don't know. It just seems awfully fishy. We're going to jump ahead because he shows off the cigars here in a second. And you can just see he's completely gone at this point. Completely gone. And this is going to be muted too because, again, they're, they're just blaring music because Connor wants to feel like he's at the club, getting ready to take someone in the public restroom. Watch this. Just, again, look at him. And just watch him here. Look at him. I wish you could hear this too because it really adds so much context, but it's not too bad just watching it. And I know he's advertising his products, but imagine if this was like Patrick Mahomes during the NFL season. This guy's supposed to be returning soon. 
<laughs> he was supposed to be, you know, Chandler was talking about them fighting in December after, you know, Connor's been off for how many years now? What's it been over three years? Connor's been out. Connor's going on four years. And there's talks of his return. And this is what he's doing on stream in his spare time. And just watch how ridiculous he looks here. <laughs> he's completely gone. He's completely gone. I mean, it's just ridiculous here. Just utterly ridiculous. And it gets worse. And he's just, <laughs> he's just posing up. And that's, that did not look like what he was smoking before. And you could barely see it on the stream before. Yeah. Yeah. That tells me this guy isn't returning to the UFC anytime soon. Next clip we're going to take a look at. And we're going we're gonna to get back to some sound here in a second when the music dies out for just a second. Next clip we're going to take a look at is, again, completely unhinged and just He's acting like he's at a club, okay? Just acting like he's at a club on a Saturday night. He looks like me back in my heyday on Saturday nights at Applebee's, all right? <laughs> That's what he looks like here. Watch him. Just watch him here. Look at him. And again, they're just gambling here. And then out of nowhere, he just starts acting like this. Watch this. Literally completely gone. Completely gone. Just spitting on the ground. He, he's, in, he's in an indoor studio and he's spitting on the ground. Disgusting and despicable, by the way. <laughs> well, I don't know what he did before he came to this stream, but it certainly wasn't legal. And people are going to say, oh, Joey, he's just having a good time. He's just having a good time. This is not normal behavior, okay? This is not normal behavior, especially when you're doing a sponsored gig, most likely in the middle of the afternoon. I don't know that for certain. And this is the way you're acting. And by the way, he barely paid attention to the guy. He just had the guy do everything and just said ridiculous stuff the entire time. Next clip we're going to look at, and this is when we're actually going to get back to some audio. He talks about his weight and basically says, I have no idea what I weigh. And, you know, I'll figure it out shortly or, or whatever. I forgot exactly what he says, but he looks absolutely horrible here. And this is when we'll get back to listening a little bit because the, because the music kind of drowns out a little bit here. Now you'll be able to actually hear him again. I don't give a ball. It's come to me, Wendy. It's come to me. I know I have. Obviously the last one, it was coming down to 170, but I was above 170. Yeah. I don't know what I am now. To be honest. Look how horrible he looks here. Eyes are barely open. Eyelids are drooping. He can barely stand up straight. He's smoking a cigar here. So maybe this is what he was smoking before. His nose seems like white. <laughs> like there's less blood flow going through his nose. I wonder why. I don't know. It was weird that he purposely went off screen to do that before. But look, I mean, this is horrendous, man. The entire stream, he was acting like a straight up crackhead. You know, it seems like he should be walking around like, you got any spare change? You got any spare change? That's what he seemed like here. And he's talking about his weight here. You'll listen to it a little bit more. I'll say I'm about 185, which is maybe even come, maybe, probably, maybe 190. What? I'm big. I'm, I'm all right. I'm doing well. I'm on the way. Come on. He's on the way, but he has no idea what weight he is. Maybe 185. I think he even said maybe 190 as well. Just looked horrible. And then the last clip we're going to take a look at is at the very, very end of the stream. And again, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And I'm going to mute this here as well. But this is him at the end. He's ready to go, man. He probably ran out of blow midstream. He's ready to get out of here. More unhinged behavior. And I mean, this is a liability for the UFC. And this is just showing me that this guy's most likely never going to return to the UFC. The more I see this, he desperately needs help. This is a cry for help. But he's so rich. He's so powerful. No one can stand up to him. You think his wife can come to him and be like, you know, you know, Connor, I think you should calm down on the drinking. I think you should calm down on the recreational drugs. You think anybody can go to him and say that? You think his friends can do that? You think Coach Kavanaugh can do that? You think Dana White can do that? No, they can't. This is the behavior of a guy who desperately needs help. And it's truly sad. Look at him here. I mean, this is, with audio, it would look even worse. But it's pretty bad just looking at it here. And you guys will have to let me know what you think. Am I overreacting here? And, and it gets worse. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here as well because it gets even worse. I'm just going to show you. Well, that I disagree. That's normal. He's betting on a hand and he's like saying, let's go, let's go because he's waiting for the results or whatever. That's normal.
show you one last clip. I wasn't even going to show you this one, but we'll skip ahead a little bit more. And this is at almost the very end of the stream, right before they wrap up here. Just look at look at the way he's acting. Imagine acting like this on a stream as a public figure. He's just completely done. I would love to know how much he drank here, but look at him. Looks like he can't barely stand up. His license has been suspended in Ireland for two years for reckless driving. <laughs> I mean, this, this is a 40-year-old man, boys. This is a 40-year-old man. A 40-year-old man. This is a 40-year-old multimillionaire man. He's acting like... I'm, I'm just going to rewind that back one more time. I don't think he's 40. Yeah, he's 36. So, not 40. It's sad, but hey, man, I don't know that this Conor McGregor story is going to end well for anyone, to be quite honest. Look at this. Look at this guy. And again, I want you guys to let me know down in the comments what you think. This is a 40-year-old man here. You could say he's having fun. You could say, Joey, just lighten up a little bit. Have some fun. This is the way he's acting every single time we see him publicly. We don't see him ever acting normal. It's not like, you see Connor like this once? Okay, he's a little bit drunk, whatever. Maybe on something else, okay. But this is the way he's acting perpetually, perpetually. And I don't even think I rewinded that correctly. Here you go. I think maybe I did. <laughs> but just, when he starts shoveling, I was dying. Maybe I didn't rewind it enough. But when he was shoveling, I was dying. But yeah, Conor McGregor, incoherent, unhinged, disastrous live stream. And what this tells me truly is that I don't believe Conor McGregor is going to return to the UFC. Right now, we'll see. You know, this is a fluid situation. Dana White saying he's going to fight in 2025. Unless Dana plans on, you know, somehow committing Conor McGregor to a rehab facility, because at that point, that's what it seems like needs to be done. This is how he's behaving at a sponsored event. Imagine having him show up to a press conference. And I know people are like, oh, I want to see cracked out Connor at a press conference. It'd be entertaining. Sure, it'll be entertaining. But at some point, this is sad. This is a guy fighting addiction. This is disastrous. This is one of the UFC's biggest stars. And say what you will, but, you know, he's a multimillionaire, but he needs help and he needs somebody to tell him, you know, look, the, the, you got to go get some help. You can't continue to act like this. You're a 40-year-old. You got like 17 kids. Who knows how many, ki how many kids you have not with D. And you're out acting like this every single time. Again, if this was once, we could let it slide. He's just having some fun. We caught him at a bad moment. Every single time he's caught in public, on camera, he's acting like this. This is him permanently. I don't think a single day goes by that he's not acting like this. I, don't, I doubt he even spends any time with his family. Now, you know, you can say what you want. He say he's at the he's at the boxing match with D. Looked cracked out there as well. So who knows what he's using? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Will he ever return to the UFC? Please subscribe to the Yeah. It wasn't that bad, but yeah, he's definitely doing some drugs and uh, like every day. That's why there's no way he's 190. He looks like he's 170 for sure. But anyways. Well, pretty interesting. We'll see where uh, where Conor McGregor goes in the future. Well, yeah, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Peace.